If you've been waiting for the day when you could do multi-camera live streaming and recording on your iPad, well, the wait is over. Today is the day that Camo Studio has been released, and it's obviously from the fine folks uh, that have bought us Camo, uh, and it is really quite phenomenal. And this is all possible because of the latest version of iOS, iOS 17 for the iPad, which now allows us to connect external cameras. So take a look at this. Here I am with my iPad mini. Yes, just a mini. It doesn't require M series chips for this to work. Um, this is a the latest generation, albeit, but in the iPad Mini 6. I've got here my Ugreen um, USB-C dock for the iPad, um, and this has got a number of different uh, ports on the side of it. So first of all, I've got my power going in here, um, but then I've got these two USBs, and one of them is the Rode Streamer X. So suddenly, what is already a pretty phenomenal device as well, the Rode Streamer X, has now suddenly got a whole new use case, which is a mobile streaming rig uh, plugged directly into your iPad, because as soon as you plug the Streamer X, into your iPad, you suddenly get your capture card functionality in here. So I'm bringing my camera in. Uh, I'm actually doing some splitting here with my cameras so that I can record in Ecamm to show you this demo, but also it's obviously all coming into the iPad as well. So this here is coming directly from the Streamer X. My camera is going into the Streamer X, then over USB, it's going straight into the iPad. That's how my camera is getting into here. Incidentally, the camera that you're seeing on the sort of right-hand side of your picture, uh, I'm using the pass-through from the Streamer x and then i'm taking that into my computer uh, and in through a capture card uh, another secondary capture card so that's how i'm getting sort of duplicates going on here Obviously, in this scene that you're seeing right now, um, on the left-hand side, we've got my top-down cam camera. Well, wouldn't it be great if we could also have my top-down camera coming directly into the iPad as well? Well, guess what? Uh, we've got this little scenes tab here. If I split switch over to this view here, you can see that now we've got on the iPad, we've got a side-by-side -side that's pretty similar to what you're seeing in the, uh, the video right now. But just know that this is completely separate. This is what's happening in Camo Studio on the iPad. And the way that I'm getting that in is I've got a cam link here from Elgato uh, and that is just plugged in over USB uh, as well into this dock here so that's it power going in the streamer x going in for audio and for video uh, and then the extra camera going in there obviously if you've got a, a different kind of dock with multiple different inputs I actually have got an extra USB so I could bring another camera in if I wanted um, but there's no uh, sort of limit <laughs> I can say there's no limit to what you could connect there is probably a limit you get the idea though you can bring in your external devices you also have access access to your built-in cameras as well. If you think that I'm a little, sound a little bit excited about this, I pretty much am because what this means is think about this from a compact streaming setup. I mean, you can bring in also like an external device. So let's say that you've got a gaming PC or something like that, and you want to bring that in, or maybe you've got a presentation slide deck, uh, and you want to bring that in, uh, then you can bring external things into here as well. So it's not just for cameras, you can bring those external things in, have your, you know, streaming your gameplay with your camera, and you're just running everything from your iPad. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, and from a mobile point of view, I mean, if you wanted to simplify this further, and you didn't want to have all of the, uh, you know, the functions of the Streamer X, for example, you could just use a cam link uh, and then use something like the PodMic USB. So you're still getting your great audio, um, obviously, or using something like the Rode Wireless Pro. If you wanted wireless mic setup, that could just plug directly into here as well. Uh, no end of uh, options here. But let's take a look at how this is actually working from the app's point of view. You've seen me uh, sort of pull out this thing with the scenes window, but let's talk through um, the full interface. So this is what the interface is looking like uh, right now. Uh, so let's start at the uh, the bottom, shall we? That panel that I pulled up. So that's called the scenes panel here. Um, and you can see that I can switch between uh, these different scenes that I've got set up. And that's how I switched from uh, that one, which was my split screen there, um, to this one, which is my main camera. So there we go we've just switched the scene um, I'll talk through how to actually build out scenes in a moment but let's just talk through the full interface first and then we'll come back to that uh, over on the right hand side at the bottom I can swipe up uh, and there we've got the stream panel so this is going to be for when you're live streaming for the live streaming chat and things like that and depending on what you're hooked up to and what you're streaming to will dictate sort of what you've got uh, available to you in here um, I've got my mouse connected, so it should help to actually just show you on here, my iPad mouse. Uh, over on the uh, the top row, let's take a look at what we've got on the top. So there is, first of all, a little sort of pop-out side window. This is related to everything um, in the current scene. So this is where we're going to select our cameras, um, the audio, and a few other different things. But I'll come back to this in a moment. Uh, next to that, we've also got this little pencil icon. Um, this is a brilliant feature because what they've done is they've just added in on screen 
screen note taking. I'm a huge fan of this. I use it when I'm using Ecamm. I use Video Pencil is the app that I use to do that. Um, but here, if you're streaming from your iPad, you've now just got it sort of built in. So uh, here we've got the pencil selected. I could be obviously using my Apple Pencil, but if you want to annotate on the screen, uh, you can do that. Obviously, probably something a little bit more useful from a squiggle. Uh, but if you're live streaming and want to draw a diagram or flowchart or whatever it is, uh, you can do all of that on uh, on here. So uh, it's just sort of built in. So that's a great little feature in itself. Uh, coming along to the center here, then uh, you've got the recording settings and the streaming settings. If I just hit the uh, little recording pop down here, um, then at the moment it's recording to library. Obviously, I've got this uh, uh, iPad dock plugged in at the moment from Ugreen, so I could have an external drive plugged into there. So you could be saving this uh, recording directly to an external drive rather than your internal, which is, uh, is a great feature as well. Uh, to be able to have a couple of cameras connected streaming to an external drive, uh, what an amazing amazing uh, sort of very, very portable mobile solution. Next is the streaming setup. Uh, so clicking on here, um, then you've got at the moment, I've only just linked it up to my YouTube channel, it will show you a list of um, different streams that are upcoming. So if you've got some scheduled, you can just select those from in there. Um, but you can also click on new broadcast, and you can actually create the new broadcast from here as well. So here you can just type in your title description, uh, the time, the schedule, the visibility, uh, and all of that kind of stuff. So you can actually just schedule it directly from in here. If you want to add in another destination, uh, you can also just click on the little plus icon here. Um, so at the moment, you can uh, stream directly to YouTube, Twitch, uh, or Trobo. I've got to say, it's not one that I've heard of personally. Um, but then you've also got uh, custom. So uh, you can just put in your um, RTMP settings. So in that respect, you can effectively stream to anywhere using your RTMP key. Also along the uh, the top here, um, we've got this little uh, slider here, which is your master volume. Um, obviously, I mentioned that uh, the Streamer X is plugged in. That is where my audio is coming from. I've actually got a second mic, um, which is plugged into the Streamer X. My pod mic is plugged into my Rodecaster for this recording. Um, but just note that uh, the audio is coming directly in from the uh, the Streamer X over the mic that I've got plugged into, uh, into that. So I'll just move that out of the way, though. But this is where you could adjust the sort of master uh, recording, master stream volume, uh, from uh, from here next to that then we've got some settings i'll go through these in more detail a little bit later uh, but that is the settings area you've got a little help section and then you've got this one which basically just maximizes the screen so if you want to get all of that interface off the screen then you can just tap that one in the top corner uh, and get it all uh, all out of there so uh, maybe the best thing then to do is to actually go through and talk about the way that these scenes are built up because there's a, a few little things that you need to be aware of and then we'll go through how to uh, set these things all up so um, the first thing to know is that uh, although you can have multiple cameras connected to your iPad, and there's obviously the built-in iPad cameras as well, um, in any given scene, you've basically got two cameras. So there's camera A and camera B. Uh, sorry, camera one and camera two. Let's talk with the right language. So you've got camera one and you've got camera two. Uh, there is then also the background. So you can see that in this particular scene that's showing at the moment, uh, there is this kind of like background uh, lighting effect going on. Uh, that is actually just a video. So that can be either a looping video or it can be a, uh, an, a still image as well. So actually this is just a little Adobe stock image um, and then you've got the camera one. Uh, the camera two is if I go over to that other scene there so this one uh, here, we've basically got uh, two cameras. So we've got uh, camera one in this instance is actually that top down shot. And the camera two is my uh, my main camera. Um, note that as well, camera one is always going to be behind uh, camera two. So it's just worth noting this so that when you're building out your scenes, you think about, you know, where you want things to uh, to be. Obviously, it doesn't really matter in this particular scene, because these two things are, you know, side by side, it doesn't really matter from a layer perspective, which one is in front of the other. But if I was to go to this scene, for example, um, you can see now, um, it does actually matter which one is which because we've got my main camera, as in my uh, camera that I'm in, <laughs> is actually over the top of that top down camera. So just beware of these layers, you've got the background with the image or the video, you've then got the camera one, and then you've got camera two, there is actually another layer going on, though, which is anything that's going over the top of that. So overlays over the top of your cameras. 
Now, in fact, um, this little uh, border that I've got around my image here um, is, in fact, rather than a border on the camera itself, you can see that it is just actually an image of a, of a little circle there um, that the camera is in. And that is an image that is, uh, is over the top of the scene. So uh, you've got those four different layers then. You've got the background, you've got camera one, you've got camera two, and then you've got the image that is over the top. So then um, let's go into have a look at how to change some of these things. And I'll probably start with um, this top down and side by side one, because uh, what I'll do is if I go into this settings here on the, uh, the top left, this is going to give us the pop out. This is where we've got all the settings related to this scene. So first of all, we've got the uh, camera one. Uh, then we've got camera two and these are basically five little panels here sorry four little panels so you've got camera one uh, camera two uh, camera uh, one second <laughs> my ipad's a battery although it's on charge it just keeps tethering around teetering around the uh, the 10 percent mark um, and you've got the uh, the microphone there and then you've got the background settings so uh, I'll start off with the background since we are in this particular thing. Uh, this is where you're going to set what is in the background of your scene. And obviously I've got this sort of uh, uh, animated, uh, colorful thing going on in the background. Uh, and here is where I selected that. So you can select image or video. So if I go into here, I could select uh, one of these other things instead. So if I go to office wall, for example, that's a bit plain. You probably can't see what's going on there. Uh, maybe go to... Uh, uh, roof. <laughs> These are just some of the uh, built-in ones, actually. But you can just select any image um, from your uh, your iPad as well. So if you've got some sort of background image, you can just go into uh, the uh, the background your photo library, sorry, uh, or you can go into this background gallery, which has got a whole series of different ones. So let's just choose that wavy one. That looks a little bit uh, a little bit more interesting. So now you can see that that wavy background then is in the uh, is in the background of this particular scene. Uh, moving elements around on the screen, like the cameras, is as simple as just just tapping uh, and moving so I'll move that one around and I can move this one around I can resize by just pinching so we can easily sort of lay out where we want these things in the uh, in the scene uh, just like that um, clicking back on this uh, little panel at the side then um, the other thing that you can change in the canvas settings is also the uh, the resolution so you've got 1080 30 1080 60 uh, 4k 30 frames per second or finally you've got the uh, vertical video there which is um, in the 1080 vertical <laughs> so 19 at uh, 1080 by 1920 and then uh, 30 frames per second as well um so then also you can just change the uh by the way the color as well so if if we didn't have an image in the background so if i just chose none uh, then you can just change choose any color if you just want a plain color in the background just by tapping on that but let me just put it back to something a little bit more interesting i'll go back into that background gallery and just choose that one again um, so then we've also got the audio settings in here. So whilst we've got this side panel out, uh, we've got this one for the microphone. Uh, this is where we're going to select the, uh, the mic that is coming in for this particular scene. One thing to note there, it does make it very abundantly clear. Um, only the most recently connected audio device uh, can be used for audio input. Uh, that must be some sort of limitation with iOS, the way that it handles audio coming in. Um, but basically what that means is that uh, if you've got the Streamer X, for example, and a CamLink, Bear in mind that CamLink can pass audio as well. If you want to use the audio from your Streamer X, all you need to make sure you do is just plug that one in the last of the devices or unplug it and plug it back in again. Uh, and it will be the the most, uh, the most one that you can access apart from obviously the built-in iPad microphone. So that's how I've got the Streamer X bringing the audio in. So then we've got these uh, camera settings, so camera one and camera two. As I mentioned in this particular scene, camera one is actually that top-down sh shot and camera two is the, uh, the main camera of, uh, of me. Um, so what we can do here is we can choose any camera that is connected. So if I click on camera here, uh, you can choose either a camera or an external device. So if you've, that's what I was saying, if you're sort of passing through maybe gameplay or something like that, uh, then you could pass that directly into your iPad for, uh, that way. Um, but here we've got a camera selected. So then just down below that, you can choose the camera and you can either choose the built-in cameras from the iPad or any one that is connected. And as you can see here, we've got the cam link uh, selected. Uh, down below there, we've got some in image enhancement uh, options and probably it's better if I go over to camera two because it will make a lot more sense in that context. Um, so camera two here is uh, the my camera, uh, but we've got exactly the same options, but just note that the Streamer X is the camera that is selected. 
Uh, but here you can do a number of things. So first of all, you can actually just remove your background. Uh, so if you want to do something where you are over the top of a scene, this is uh, sort of catching the, uh, the the microphone. But you can see it's doing a pretty reasonable job of removing uh, the background from around me. So if you were doing something where you wanted to be kind of uh, you down at the bottom, maybe over the top of a screen share or something like that. <laughs> I should have had a more charged battery before I before I recorded this, but never mind. Um, you can uh, you can use that. So uh, obviously this is something in the foreground is just uh, sort of tricking it, but actually it's pretty good um, if you don't have anything like that right in the uh, the middle of the view. Uh, the other thing that you can do though here is use the portrait mode. So that's just going to sort of enhance the uh, the image. You're not going to see this too well because I've got obviously this this thing going on in the uh, the background here. Um, so my particular uh, background image is not really suited to showing some of these off. Uh, the other one is privacy. What that's going to do is basically sort of blur out your background a little bit. Uh, and then you've also got um, replace, which is if you want to use green screen, um, you can see how it's basically just instead of removing the background, it's putting the green there. But then I can go into the uh, where it says replace, you'll see that there is also then a, a choose background option. So I can go and choose a background to use with that green screen. So I'm going to turn that off for the time being though so I'll just put that back to a normal uh, the other thing that you've got in here is filters so in filters there are some listed up here but notice that you've got this filter gallery as well so if you wanted to do something like uh, black and white for example click on that one um, and then uh, just close this down uh, you can see that my camera is now uh, is now black and white so I'll leave you to play around and check out all of those different filters uh, so for the time being I'll just turn that uh, off again um, you've also got this feature which is called spotlight the point of that is to kind of uh, put the background more into darkness so if I toggle that on uh, and then adjust this uh, this slider here for the spotlight effect uh, you can see that what that's done is it's kind of dimmed down the background to be honest with you it's giving a bit of a weird effect here but that is largely because of the fact that I've got such a vibrant background going on it's not the best background for the demonstration of this um, but anyway that is the spotlight feature um, and then what we've got is the frame shape. Now at the moment, this is set to custom, but uh, let me set this to rectangle. You can see what's happened there. Uh, we've got the uh, the rectangular shape, so a typical 16 by nine. Um, if I just pop that out again, obviously the others are pretty self-explanatory. We've got square, so now that's a perfect square. Uh, and then you've also got the circle, uh, which surprisingly is a circle <laughs> um, but the custom is the one that I was just using and what that does is it's basically uh, taking the rectangular shape and you can sort of crop in from the side so this slider here you can see what that's doing it's basically just cropping in so if you wanted to make it vertical um, that is how you would uh, do that. Um, the other thing then that we've got down here just coming down a little bit further is we've got the corner radius so you can see as I increase that corner radius just down at the bottom here um, as I increase that then it's increasing the corner radius on that particular overlay so I'll just take that one back down so it's more uh, the same as the other one which was about two I think the next thing you've got then is framing and this is using um, a feature that we're kind of used to in the iPad but it just means that it works with any camera actually so if I click on auto um, and then I just adjust the uh, whoops I need to turn that framing down sorry uh, then what this should do now is hopefully with a bit of luck uh, it should actually follow me around in the uh, <laughs> in the scene uh, so if I move around you can see that it is sort of following me it's uh, not got a lot of move room to move but uh, if you've got a sort of wider angle um, then I'm pretty much well framed uh, then it will sort of follow you around in that uh, in that scene uh, the thing that we've got underneath there is the framing uh, that is to do with how you are framed in the scene so you can kind of zoom in and out like that uh, this is now doing a much better job at following me around so you can see that as I move uh, then the uh, the framing feature is working to sort of keep me in shot so uh, that is how that works so I'll just turn that off and I'll turn uh, the framing off uh, the other thing then that we've got here is rotation obviously I mentioned that if you want to have a sort of more vertical looking video uh, you could sort of crop in the sides the other option of course would be just to mount your camera on its side um, and then go into the rotation settings and you could adjust those there the other thing that we've got here is mirror as well if you want to just mirror your video to the left and right so those are the camera settings that we've got and the levels of adjustment we've got and obviously you can do that for camera one and for camera two 
So then I mentioned about there being these four levels. You've got what's going on in the background. You've got the camera one, then you've got camera two. And we've also got what is happening in the uh, in the front there. So that would be something like that scene that I showed you, which is this one, where in actual fact, that border that is going around my, uh, my main camera down there, that is actually a sort of transparent overlay over the top of it. Uh, the way that you have to do that is it can't actually be added in directly from here, from this panel. Um, the way that you do that is when you create the scene. So I've got a couple of scenes here that sort of show this. So this one, for example, uh, what you can see is I created this scene uh, where I've got uh, this thing that is sitting over the top of everything. And in actual fact, if I move this camera around, you can see that that camera is uh, just behind uh, that window. So maybe if I make that a bit smaller, I've also got this camera here and you can see that they're kind of behind that overlay. So that overlay with those cutouts is actually just um, over the top of these cameras. And then I'm just simply positioning those cameras uh, where I want them within that, uh, that, that framing, that, that frame there. So the way to do that then is in the scenes. Um, so far, I've just showed you how to adjust things in scenes. Uh, but if you want to add in a new scene, you click on the little plus icon uh, just up at the top. Let me just show you where that was in case you missed it. Uh, just up at the top here, click on the little plus uh, and you've got a few options. If you create a new scene, it's just going to be a completely blank scene with one camera in uh, and then you can go through and make those adjustments, add in your second camera, add in the background and so on. In order to get this overlay over the top though, uh, you can you need to go to this one, new scene from image, and you choose the file from either uh, your, uh, your files on your iPad or from your photo library. Um, so that will then import that um, and you'll have that as the overlay. So that's what I've done here. This uh, sort of overlay that I've got going on here, including the little title, live streaming from iPad with Camo Studio, that was created uh, on my computer uh, and then I just uh, brought it into my iPad. Obviously you could create that on your iPad too. Um, the other option though that you've got here is you've got uh, here to import new scene from web. So if you're using some sort of web widget uh, overlay, uh, then that is how you would bring that in uh, from there. Um, and the other option you've got is import camo scene. So camo on the desktop, um, if you're not familiar with camo, that allows you to use your uh, iPad or iPhone camera as a webcam on your computer. And in fact, actually they've got a way of creating scenes and so on in, in camo studio on the iPad on the desktop. So you can actually import those from here as well if you've created them in that. So I'll just um, come out of here. So that is how you basically create new scenes um, is just by hitting that little plus button. You can actually organize these as well. So you can see that there's a sort of list of scenes here, um, but there is up at the top here, it says all scenes. Uh, they are at the moment grouped by um, uh, all scenes, favorites, templates, conferencing and streaming. Uh, and so if I go into favorites, for example, here we have a smaller list of just a few different scenes. So think of this as well as different use cases you may have. You may want to just sort of group different scenes together uh, for different use cases in the same way that they've sort of shown there. So maybe some streaming setup, maybe uh, some for conferencing or whatever. Um, so that's how, uh, how they've organized those. But you can go in and change this by clicking on the little four icons here, little four boxes icon. Opening that up is going to give you access to all of your different scenes. It shows you sort of a preview of what they're looking like, of course, as well. Um, and then what you can do is you can just basically long press on any of those scenes um, and then you can organize them by add them to a collection. So these different groupings are called uh, collections and you can just go in and choose which one you want to add that into. And so if I go into conferencing now, uh, then you see that scene has been added in there. As you can also see, you can just add in a new collection as well. So if you want to add in a new collection uh, you're just going to uh, type that in there and uh, it will then uh, add that to that list and th those different groupings. So as I say best way to think about that is for different use cases that you may have for this. So that is the scenes. Um, so the stream panel, as I've said, this is going to be where your um, chat comes up. So I'm not going to uh, show that right now because I'm not streaming. I'm going to do a completely separate uh, live demo of this by just doing a live stream from the device, which is what this scene, in fact, was set up for. Uh, incidentally, another scene that I set up with an overlay, just while we're talking about that, if I go back to my favorites, uh, then another one would be this one. So uh, this is in exactly the same way I created actually this overlay as a transparent overlay uh, and then the camera is sort of behind it so it means I don't have to bother about lining up uh, corners and rounded corners and so on I've just done it with one of these uh, these overlays 
Um, so now let's take a look at some of the other settings though. If I come up into this little settings section uh, up in the, uh, the top corner, uh, I have to forget, you can't necessarily see where I'm tapping. So this is right up in the, uh, the top right hand corner here. Uh, so if I tap on that, um, then we've got some settings. So you can choose between either light and dark mode um, or obviously just following the system. Uh, we've got this concept called scene variables. Now um, I have been testing this uh, since it was in beta and there were some other scene variables in here. So I can see that in the future, um, there are gonna be some more added back in, uh, but this has been simplified for the time being. But these are things that uh, can just sort of be bought in as sort of uh, predefined elements in your scenes. And if I go over to another scene perhaps, which will sort of show this better, if I go into all scenes, uh, something like this one, for example, uh, where's it gone? Well, in fact, that one that we showed earlier, uh, you can see how that's got my name up in the top and it's got uh, take one tech. Um, and then if I was to go into this other scene over here, uh, for example, uh, then you can see that this one's been set up. I haven't actually set the cameras up. Uh, this has got my name and the take one tech as well. Maybe I can just show you quickly uh, to go through the process. Uh, this is just the default for this scene. You can see it's got this rather <laughs> unflattering up the nose shot on this bottom right hand corner camera. So if I click click on the little output there, click on camera two, I'm going to change that to streamer X. So now you see it's brought my proper camera into the bottom. Uh, and then let's come up into here, I'm going to tap on camera one, go into the device, and then I'll change that to the cam link. Uh, and then look at that. Now we've got a nice looking scene uh, with that, uh, that title. And this is one of the, the built in scenes. So uh, this was one created by uh, by camo that's just on the device as a default. But that's how easy it is to just sort of select these cameras. But the, uh, the I digress slightly, the point of this was that you see at the bottom, left it says Alec Johnson take one tech um, and that was added from these settings here so that is what are scene variables so um, the point about this I mentioned that you know having tested the beta the point about this is uh, a brand new app just out however you know it is still under you know active heavy development so uh, I'm really interested to see you know how this develops because it's already uh, already f fantastic the next one then is uh, destinations so this is where you can add in a new destination so pick YouTube, you would go through, it would take you through to, I mean, just go back out of that. <laughs> uh, there, it would take you through to just log in through, uh, through Google, uh, and then it would uh, connect you back into your, um, uh, and, and connect you back in and show that it was uh, connected. Uh, next, you've got recording locations. So again, it says photo library, but if you had an external drive connected, you could connect those in there. Um, you've got some other advanced things in here. So like exporting logs, uh, generally only to do uh, when you re requested terms of use, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so those are the, uh, the settings. Let me just bring this back to one of these different uh, scenes for a second. I'll put it back to uh, this one over here. And I've just moved things slightly out of alignment. So let me put those back. Um, and then what else can I tell you about this? Uh, the streaming, I mentioned that you're just going to come in here. Um, and then you can just basically press on the start button and it would start the live stream. As I said, I am going to do a uh, test of this, but I'll do that as a separate uh, test on the, uh, the channel. And then what I'll do is I'll link to that um, from this video. Uh, but all in all, this is uh, pretty phenomenal that we've got now uh, streaming from the uh, from the iPad directly to uh, these different platforms. One thing that I'm not able to do on the iPad mini, but you can do on one of the uh, iPad Pros with the M chips in them, M series chips, is you can actually also um, share an app. So I haven't done any sort of screen sharing on this because it's not possible with the uh, with the iPad mini, but on the uh, M series, what you can do is you can share a specific app. So in the settings where you set a camera, you can actually just go in and select a specific app that's running on your iPad. And what you would do is you would basically minimize your iPad, uh, minimize Camo Studio on the iPad rather, uh, go into that app and then it would just be uh, in there being uh, being shared to your recording or shared to your screen. So multi-camera recording, multi-camera streaming, screen sharing of apps from the iPad, screen sharing of external devices if you're plugging them in over HDMI through a capture device or whatever um, is pretty mind-blowing uh, for me personally. Um, not least the fact that we can also connect now the Streamer X directly with the iPad. Uh, just thinking about the compact nature of this because I have been testing some other portable streaming devices. Um, so the fact that, you know, the iPad that we've uh, we've got in our pockets or bags already um, can now just be used for this is pretty fantastic. 
If you found this useful, then uh, do go ahead and uh, click the like and subscribe button and definitely go and grab Camo Studio because it is free. Unbelievably, you'll find a link to that down in the description. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link to the uh, test that I do over on the right hand side as soon as I have completed it. And then you'll be able to click and go and see what you think of the quality of that.